The Miami Dolphins do not have much to do at the quarterback position, just sign a capable backup in case Tua Tagovailoa goes down, that's all, Skylar Thompson will enter the 2023 season as the third quarterback on the roster and while he performed admirably last year when he was called upon, he is still too raw to be considered a viable option should Tua go down to injury or concussion. This means that the Dolphins should hit free agency looking for a quarterback to be the number two on the team. Last year the Dolphins put Teddy Bridgewater in that role and it was a disaster. Still, there are some in the media that believe Miami could bring him back for another season with a non-guaranteed contract or at the very least a lot less than the $8 million they guaranteed him last year. That wouldn't be smart but Miami has done a lot worse over the years so would it be surprising? Miami has five options at quarterback this offseason and all of them will come with a degree of skepticism and potential outrage. Trade for a quarterback to replace Tua, expect outrage, trade for a backup quarterback, why trade for a backup, draft a quarterback and make him the backup, what does that say about Thompson, sign a free agent veteran to hold the clipboard, this makes the most logical sense, make Thompson the backup, a risky move, the first two make little sense for the Dolphins. The third would make little sense as well give the fact Miami doesn't have a first round draft pick and if you are drafting a developmental quarterback in the mid to late rounds. That is what Thompson was brought in for. The fourth option, signing a veteran free agency, makes the most sense, and the Dolphins need to get someone on board that can be relied upon should to a miss time. Many suggest Mitch Trubisky as an option but he has flamed out in Chicago and was replaced by a rookie in Pittsburgh last season. A capable backup? Probably, Miami's biggest issue at the position is there are no guarantees that if Tua goes down that he will miss just the remainder of the game, pulled for a suspected concussion. Miami's bigger problem is what happens if he misses multiple games. Will any backup be able to step into Mike McDaniel's offense and run it as easily as Tua can? Probably not, so what should the Dolphins do? Honestly, they have few options. They are riding with Tua and that creates potential issues. The best they can do is study the available free agents and get a guy that wants to play and hope for the best. The best being, of course, is that they never have to worry about the backup position at all. The strength of the Miami Dolphins' defense last year was without a doubt the defensive line. Multiple players had good years, and could be better next year, this is part one of a three-part series reviewing the Miami Dolphins' defense. Christian Wilkins, Jalon Phillips, Bradley Chubb, Raekwon Davis, and Melvin Ingram headline a talent-filled defensive line for the Dolphins, let us start with the flashy thing, their ability to rush the passer. The Dolphins finished the year with 40 sacks. Phillips led the way with seven sacks on the season. Ingram was right behind him with six, let us start with Phillips. He had a great year too. His sacks were down from last year but his total tackles was up by over 20 and he had nine more quarterback hits this year than last year, Phillips could emerge in year three as a star. He can get after the passer and his ability to defend the run improved dramatically. People are excited about the future of Jevon Holland, and they should be. But I am more excited about the impact Phillips could have for years to come, I would like to see the Dolphins resign Ingram. Since the Dolphins traded for Bradley Chubb he will not be a starter next year but he adds depth to the position. He played well this past season, and even with limited snaps at the end of the year he proved he could be productive. Before I move on to the less glamorous side of playing the defensive line it would be a crime if I did not address the piss-poor play of Bradley Chubb. I was excited when the Dolphins traded for Chubb and extended him. Then, he played horrendously. Over the eight games he played as a member of the Miami Dolphins he had two and a half sacks, 13 tackles, and 12 quarterback hits. It was so underwhelming. The good news is that the Dolphins officially announced Vic Vangio as the new defensive coordinator. Chubb is a talented player who had some success under Vangio in Denver. I expect him to play much better this year, now, let us look at the run defense. It was anchored by Pro Bowl snub Christian Wilkins, opposing teams averaged just over 103 yards per game running the ball. That was the fourth best mark in the NFL, that run defense was anchored by Christian Wilkins. Wilkins had an incredible year. He had 98 tackles, that is an insane number for a defensive lineman. He single-handedly limited the opposing team's run game, 
Wilkins's dominance overshadowed how productive of a year Zach Seiler had. The former seventh-round pick had 70 tackles and three and a half sacks. He was extremely consistent, and outperformed former second-round pick Raekwon Davis, Davis has to be better. He is extremely talented, but he has not produced since being drafted in 2020. If he can develop, the potential three-headed monster of Wilkins, Seiler, and Davis would be lethal, this line is loaded with talent. They had a solid year this year, and I cannot wait to see what Vic Vangio does with this unit.